Modified cell phone interfaced with a laptop computer creates an enormously powerful tool. Hello and welcome to another episode of Kill James Bond Season 2. And we're back. I mm. am Alice Caldwell Kelly. I am joined once again by Abigail Thorne. And Hello. Hello. My name's as Abigail. Always, <laughs> just, we got double <laughs> Abigail. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's here for real this time. Yeah, I'm back from LA. I, I have blonde hair. I've got enormous lip fillers. I've got a tiny dog. And a huge iced coffee, and I'm ready to record a podcast. My God, bestie! And we have Devon also. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm getting big into surfing. I think that'll be good. Yeah, mm. cool. This is now an entirely, it's an all Californian podcast. Let's um, go. And in celebration of this, we watched a 1998 spy movie called Enemy of the State with Will Smith. Mm. Going to Gold's Gym, Venice, which is, as we know, uh. Dude Mecca. Is that the oh, one that's there. just like open, just like on the beach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so, Fuck, yeah. that's cool. I okay. went there, we saw it, it was good. I'm not, quite yeah. sure, I'm not quite sure what a California Alice vibe would be. I mean, I don't know, if, if, if you have ideas, write in, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> right, right Hijab in. on top, bikini on the bottom. Yeah, exactly. That's Is it what the Katy Perry song Probably, was all about. and yet. Um, <laughs> but so, we... What do we think of this movie, first of all? What's, what's our, our vibe going in? I had a really good time with this one. I did too, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's too long, but it's almost good. It's directed by um, uh, Ridley Scott's brother, Tony. Uh, so, R.I.P., <laughs> sadly. Oh. <laughs> no, I was no, laughing he... at the concept of Ridley Scott's brother, Tony, not yeah. I am yeah, was... dying. I want to be very clear. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> Ridley Scott's brother, Tony, is a fun, like phrase but he did do some like good movies he did like man mm. on fire he did uh Crimson directed Side. by ridley scott's brother tom scott he, did, he directed <laughs> top gun for fuck's sake uh, oh really? fuck yeah oh, dude okay nice nice all right banger yeah uh and, and so what we have here is uh, a, a sort of i guess you can get the sense from it from the first uh the first scene right which is much like in breach we have a conversation with an older white guy who is america um that's right because we, we, we see ourselves in a park in Maryland um, where John Voigt, who is this spooky NSA official, is meeting with the good congressman. His name is Congressman Hammersley. This dude's Ed Markey. Just, he looks like Ed Markey. <laughs> well, we find, I think it's worse than that because we find out later he's a New York Republican and his name is Hammersley. This is a fucking Rockefeller. Uh, they want a Rockefeller so bad. It's like a principled Republican. There's yeah, no such thing anymore, I'm afraid, boys. This this man is a Lincoln Project motherfucker. Yes, mm. yes, for sure. Um, but what he's doing is he is obstructing John Voigt's desire to do warrantless mass surveillance and to pass the uh, the Patriot Act because it you know it's it's the wrong thing to do and this national security should it's a bullshit excuse. Uh, and and John Voigt calls this um, liberal hysteria. And that immediately, to me, sets out what the tone of this movie is going to be. This oh, is yeah. going to be uh, sort of '90s Democrat ass politics, and 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 so it proves to be. I mean, I never get the impression that John Voight is particularly politically sincere about that. Mm. He definitely comes across as a guy who will will say whatever to whoever. That's true. Um, but what, the congressman will not play ball, and so he just uh, jo John Voight immediately moves to execute like him as. Like to do a deep state political murder immediately off the bat. Oh, instantly. There's a there's a line. I didn't get any um clips from this one because I was watching it on the TV downstairs. But um, one of his lines is, "Do you read the post?" <laughs> Which yeah, that was going to strikes yeah. me. There's also I a clip where where John Voigt kind of seems to vaguely threaten to blackmail this congressman. He does, and, and he calls him and he says, "Are you are you blackmailing me?" And then there's a great bit where he goes, "No, of course not." You're a good politician. Your constituents are lucky to have you. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 really nice. It's a nice little moment where he kind of implies that he's got dirt on him. And I was like, ooh, the intrigue. Oh, 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 they murdered him. Okay. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> I'm going to blackmail you. No, you won't. That's right. I'm actually going to kill you. Try they to, just try kill him instantly. 
just sort of moves from one plot to another very quickly. John Voight's character does. Uh, he really does. He, he just he just has him injected with mysterious chemical, and then they dump his car in the water, like uh, making it look like an accident. I think the idea is that he's meant to have had a, a heart attack. Yes. And then we go straight to some some baffling opening titles. The nineties. Yeah. This movie came out in nineteen ninety eight, which is two years before I was born. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right that's maths uh -huh. um, it's the 90s we've got spinning computers we've got yep. surveillance footage yep. we've got landmarks love a landmark oh, we've got so many landmarks baby this this whole sequence is so 90s I yeah really it, everything's it. got kind of like the dial up tone mixed into it there's one other thing which is there's a motif here which is this movie is terrified of spy satellites specifically it really is and so whenever it needs to convey the government is doing evil spying shit it just swoops a big spy satellite past you while it plays some like morse code over mm. it um, yeah it's very like space race paranoia it's uh yeah and and then so that's one half of the opening titles the other half is that it's intercut with sort of like america's wildest police chases footage <laughs> yeah that's yeah. Kind of weird they couldn't think of any other way to convey like Pursuit, and so it's just a bunch of footage of like guys running from the cops and being chased down. Yes, and you know, fair enough. That's that's the theme of the movie: is guy runs from cops who are also satellites. Mm -hmm. So we meet our protagonist, uh, oh, Robert boy. Robert Clayton Dean Will Smith, uh, who is a labor lawyer in DC, and Will Smith is having a lot of fun playing a nerd in this movie. I'll say mm. that for him. Yeah, I like him in this film. I think he does a great job. It's a, it's sort of a departure for him because he was like doing comedic roles before this, and this is like more or less straight drama, and like bits of comedy like leak out into it. But so he he is investigating this this mob boss, Holly Pintero, played by Tom Sizemore. And my note for Tom Sizemore in this movie is, holy shit, is that Tom Sizemore? Why is he talking like that? <laughs> <laughs> baffling, yeah, baffling line delivery from Tom on this one. Literally, this guy, this whole, this guy's whole deal is like, "Hey, oh, whoa!" That's his whole character. I, I have, mm -hmm. I have one drop of Tom Sizemore, and it's a baffling line and a baffling read of that line. Felonious cock sucking with an attempt to swallow. T oh, sure, okay, yeah, man. But so w Will Smith is in order to get justice for his clients. He's working with uh, his ex-girlfriend, or ex-side piece. Yeah, she's a lawyer. Rachel um, Banks. And mm. he, he gives her cash payments, and in exchange, um, she is in touch with this mysterious person uh, who we don't know called Brill. Yes. And Brill always like manages to turn up the evidence. So uh, he, Will Smith gives her a big wad of cash, and she gives him a videotape from Brill. Uh, this is like a VHS tape, which has the evidence of the mob boss doing corrupt shit on it. Yes, yeah. He's hanging out with like the um administrators of the pension fund or whatever. Um so he he goes to Pintero's Italian American legitimate businessman social club. <laughs> I don't, That's right. We've never done a mob movie on this podcast before and at we, some point we'll have to do the godfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to do a, a like a, a mob season, but uh, mm. it's not starting with this, let me tell you. Um mm. The, the one thing that the movie wants you to note is that there is an FBI surveillance post opposite the Italian-American legitimate businessman's social club for legal activities. And you can tell this because there's a guy with a big camera twitching a neck curtain anytime anyone goes into the big Italian-American legitimate businessman's social club. The other thing to note about this is that everyone knows they're there. Yes. Uh, as Will leaves the fucking event, there's a guy out there going like, "Hey, smile for the FBI," and points directly at where their stakeout is. <laughs> and and then we come back like weeks later, and they are still there. So yes. this is just—it's like two just, fort. They're across the street from each other. They're just—they're <laughs> just—they're just putting in that paycheck, baby. It's fine. I, ca I, ca I kind of like that actually. Like I—I I think there are real examples of this happening. So oh, certainly. Fine. But so so Will Smith goes in there and he tries to like blackmail this mob boss Tom Sizemore out of controlling the union um, with this videotape. Uh, and Tom Sizemore is very keen to know who made the tape, but Will Smith won't give him up. Made the fucking tape. Made the fucking. Will Smith tape. doesn't even know. No. Oh. 
Uh, and so he he says, you know, I'm I'm going to give you a week to tell me who who made the tape, or I'm going to kill you, which is fair enough. This is like portrayed as very sort of low stakes. Like he's not actually really going to bother, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, the FBI spot Will Smith leaving this meeting, and uh, one of them says he doesn't look Italian to yeah, me, which I was like, something. Oh. Something I liked about this is that it does explicitly the portray the FBI and the mob as being equally racist, in that they both refer to Will Smith by slurs. It's like, sure, that's that's realistic to me. Yeah. Now, they're investigate. <laughs> they're investigating the uh, mysterious. Well, not mysterious. Actually, why are they even fucking investigating it if it's not mysterious? But there's a sh- they went missing. Like- they're, they're not investigating it at all. Actually, it's a bunch of um, cops have just rolled up to pull this car out of the You're river, right. and it's like news guys there. You're right. And someone happens to spot uh, a guy, one one of one of the primo guys, just taking oh, yeah. like looks looks a bit like first season Mac from Always Sunny. Fuck, uh, he does. It, he's he's his name is Zavitz, Daniel Zavitz. There's a bird watching hide, like mm-hmm. directly opposite where the congressman was murdered, and so the the nature photographer who runs the bird watching hide comes, like not knowing that there's been a death, just comes and retrieves the tape from the bird watching hide, which presumably has footage of the murder on it. Yes, yeah, and yes. this this sets off the sort of like uh, first big Jason Bourne style chase sequence of this movie, where we follow oh, this yeah. all the way to the. Uh, the NSA, the National Security Agency's command center, where John Voight is busy sort of doing his, like, give me good numbers, Jimmy, sort of, like, round of phone calls to get this, uh, to get this surveillance bill passed, and is then, and is then sort of given the news, uh, oh, hey, by the way, some guy just has video evidence of you doing the murder, uh, of, of a sitting congressman. So he immediately sets out to, to start a cover-up, which, but, he has a, a baffling phrase here. We need two techs with full electronic capabilities, two Humpty Dumpties. Yeah, yep. not quite sure. Not quite sure what that is. Uh, yeah, no idea. <laughs> They're like, this guy might have a tape of the murder, and immediately uh, Reynolds is like, get me some Humpty Dumpties and kill this motherfucker right now. Is, is he asking for two eggs, or <laughs> is he saying we need all the king's men? Considering uh, the two dudes that roll up afterwards, I think he means get me a pair of dipshits. Yeah, get me a now. pair of like disposable dipshits we can throw onto the bus. And so they get two guys who are in yes. the, the marine yes. stockade. Um, and these fucking dudes make my day every time they're <laughs> do, on screen. Do they're you want to talk about these dudes? Bingham and Krug, and they're fucking. <laughs> <laughs> my I, I name started is referring Mr. to them Krug. As, the, as the fucking Twunkelvoss twins, right? Because these guys are. <laughs> They're, they're just like they're identical, except one is much wider in the neck, um, and their their job is whatever. Sort yeah, of. yeah, just yeah, sort of goons. like yeah, do they're goon stuff. The, the haircuts on these guys, by mm. the way, incredible. Mm. It's sort of like a like if a flat top was back combed. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's it's tremendously weird looking. Who else have they got there though? Who else is oh, in the? Baby, who else works got, for the NSA? They've got motherfucking Jack Black in that fucking room, baby. Jack Black yeah. is present. I saw Jack Black and I went, "Holy shit!" Yeah, fucking there Jack he is. Black. He's he, he's sort of like he's the computers guy, and there's this huge ensemble cast in this movie, and apparently like ninety percent of them said yes because they wanted to work with. S- slight spoiler here: Gene Hackman. Who is in this movie? That's fair. <laughs> that doesn't speak to any of them. That rules. And, and, and if uh, that isn't a window into the sort of like st- uh, like status of celebrity in 1998, that you'll do a movie purely because you want to hang out with Gene Hackman of all people. I, Gene I don't Hackman's know fucking is. sick. Like I love Gene Hackman. He was fucking Lex Luthor. I mean, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Do you know what? We may as well like say who's the other computer nerd they have in this. They, yeah, they also and this this guy hoved into view during a scene later on and caused me to have to pause and think for a while. But they have an infant Seth Green. Yes, they yeah. got a Seth Green fresh out the pussy. My man is is <laughs> he childlike. Came, he came out with like sort of frosted tips, slightly spiked hair, and wearing yellow Oakleys. Uh, yeah, he's one of the guys that like hangs out in a surveillance van and just makes comments about it, basically he just riff tracks like security footage. Yeah, which is what you want when you when you're doing sort of like uh, deniable black bag operations, is you want to have Seth Green riffs happening. Oh yeah, but so uh, what? What he what he tells them is okay. Go put a team together, find this wildlife journalist, get the tape back, and kill him. 
Hack tap bypass. Exactly. That's uh, right. Meanwhile, we see this this wildlife journalist Zavitz in his apartment watching the tape back. Uh, he he plays the the actual murder enhanced and like five times just so you get that he's seen it, and then says bafflingly, "Fuck a duck." And having sure th- thusly having thusly reacted, copies the the tape onto a floppy dri- uh, floppy disk just in time for the goons to show up. Uh, first, first he calls his friend, who runs oh, a yes. left-wing news desk, That's and right. says, "Yo, I've got footage of of, of Abigail some... Thorne taking money from MI6, what? the royal no family, one's got any footage of me. the CIA, um, etc." What? No. A pizza on the street. Kill this motherfucker now. <laughs> um, so he calls his friend on the left-wing news desk, and he says, "Yo, I've got footage of John Voight um, from from the movie Lara Croft, and uh, he's he's murdering some Congress yeah. person." Yeah. Um, and so the NSA are hearing this, and Jack Black is like, "You just fucking call the left wing news desk, like hack tab bypass." Hack um, tab and, th- and then I th- there is one thing. Um, God, what did I fucking save this under? Oh yeah, the way he describes this to his friend is that the congressman has been negative. Hammersley was professionally wasted under the direction of some anal retentive. Which I, is, I like okay. that there's a clear like mid line. Oh, in mm-hmm. professionally wasted. So it's, it's, this guy was professionally <laughs> wasted. Recorded <laughs> from a different room. Mm. Uh, oh, I'm I curious to see what the original was. Then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> was Yo, this dude slurred, got man. fucking <laughs> murked. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, as you say, this like travels down the phone line and triggers John Voight to go, okay, go and kill this motherfucker right now. So the Marines go to his house um, and he escapes with the copied tape. Yeah, at this oh, point yeah. we, we, we get a, a chase sequence which involves only the shakiest of cams. Mm. Um, it's good though. Th- well, the really funny thing to me and the thing that immediately stretches credulity is one of the marines sees him leave via the back door and goes, okay, get, a, get satellite imagery to this latitude and longitude so we can follow this guy along a, like a roof line in real time. And then we get the big shot of the keyhole satellite or whatever swooshing over the earth. Um, it's like, okay, sure, fine. Meanwhile, Will Smith is going shopping. He's taking the day off after having threatened mm. a mob boss. And he, he calls, I guess, his secretary to ask, Do chicks dig lingerie? And when he's told that chicks do dig lingerie, he goes into the we most... We do, we do. ...sexually threatening lingerie yeah, like, store. Is this place is terrifying. <laughs> is this what... Terrifying, it's, it's amazing. Um, is this what... Is this what... Lingerie shops were like in the nineties. We we have to get we have to get time travel. If if you could go into a fucking agent provocateur or whatever and just have a woman wearing only the lingerie in question, just sort of vaguely humiliate you for five to ten minutes, I don't think I would ever leave. Yeah, thing. so like he goes into the lingerie shop and like all the women who work there are just in the lingerie. Um, and Will Smith has this like really quite funny like back and forth. Yeah, he's like with, awkward with the sales. Like it's, yeah. it is like very funny, and they both do a great job. Actually, the actress in this is like it's, very what's, good. What's really funny is she's like, "Oh, you're buying it for your wife," and I'm just like, I wrote down, is "She clocking him here." <laughs> <She really laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> would she just would she just look at Will Smith and go egg? Yeah, it is very funny, but like at the same time, this scene. Quite clearly exists just to show us ass and titties. Yeah, and I'm right. not. I'm um, not opposed to that. Yeah, I mean, th- he does a pretty solid impression of every dipshit I've ever seen interact with a sex worker for the first time. <laughs> uh, which is, he just spends the whole time being like, "Oh, not my penis, though." Uh, mm-hmm. Which, yeah, he does like Chevy Chase in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yeah. Shit, he fucking does. <laughs> <laughs> um, he really does. But like, this scene nudges up the M score. Yeah, he he gets his wife some lingerie that is fitted by looking at another employee and going, "That size, I guess." Which is, mm. yeah, don't buy a bra by looking at someone else and going, that'll do, I think. Yeah, yeah. He didn't prep for this at all. Like, he, she asks him uh, his wife's bra size, and he goes, he, he, he responds to that like he's just been asked for his social security number. It's like, there's a little tag on the inside of. Oh, anyway, so. Remember you came in here to buy this, man. You should have some information. Yeah, but- <laughs> whatever. So Zavitz is, is doing some parkour over some roofs. Uh, he he ducks through a. Uh, we get the 
traditional shot of like a busy kitchen having a chase scene run through it. It's also a bit racist in that it's uh, a kitchen full of Asian chefs who are all yelling and one of them just has a giant thing flambeing. Yeah, this um, movie has a thing about Asian people. It does. This is one of really two yeah. weird Asian moments in Nudging this movie. up the C score. Yes. Yeah. We also see that Seth Green and some other random dipshit are in the van uh, sort of operationally controlling this chase. And when you want to control a situation, what you want generally is you want two guys yelling over each other really frenetically because that emphasizes speed uh, and that makes it really easy for you to catch up to people. Yeah, you want a lot of radio chatter and you want a lot of it to be like them doing bits. Yes. Yeah. So they're like playing yes. drops down the radio. <laughs> yeah. They're, honestly, they are riffing. Which... Yeah, they're doing callbacks to previous missions. It's yeah. For a fucking CIA Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> they got like a good five oh. minutes out of professionally wasted. And they're just doing that while the Marines they are, are like, running the CIA around. clowns. <laughs> <laughs> professionally wasted. <laughs> So, um, uh, Zavitz manages to evade the the Marines quite well, and he, he rushes into the lingerie store, where he runs into Robert, whom he knows from Georgetown. They went to university together. Um, and in your sort of, like, John Buchan, or your, you know, North by Northwest, or any of these other, like, misadventure, misunderstanding movies, he slips the copy of the disc, which is, he's put in, into, like, a, a Game Boy, into uh, into Robert's uh, like shopping bag, just goes help me, runs out the front door, and then Will Smith gives him his business card. Yeah, the, the, sure. inter the interaction is is even weirder, which is that he he runs in, he just like grabs him, and Will Smith's like, oh hey, it's you, how you doing? My name's fucking uh, G, whatever the fuck. He just hands him like I don't remember his name. It's Will Smith. He hands him a fucking business card immediately, just sort of reflexively, which I quite to be enjoy. Fair, Americans do do that. Like everyone at VidCon was just like, "Here's my card," and I'm like, "I'm gonna put this in the bin." I'm like, I should I should get some cards mocked up. But it just it just says Devon, and then at the bottom there's no contact details, and it's like, <laughs> "Don't contact me." <laughs> oh, that's really funny. So 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 Zavitz runs outside. He steals a bike. There's a like a two minute bike chase. And what's really Good. confusing is that the the guys chasing him are operating on sort of like playground rules. Like they're mm -hmm. all like, "I'm going to get you." The, 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 they don't try and they're kill him. him. Around it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so what he does is he steals this bike, veers across two lanes of traffic, jumps the central reservation, and gets oh my god aced by <laughs> a extremely <laughs> killed. <laughs> My dude gets murked, full caps. By a fire truck. We see him from the like surveillance satellite in GTA 2 sort of vision from top down. And as a woman says to Will Smith, who comes out to see what has happened. A guy on a bike got cringe. That's right. <laughs> uh, but they, uh, they go and search him, his body, and they can't find the tape on him. But they do find Will Smith's business Exactly. Mm. So Will Smith... Uh, uh, still unknowing that he's been put in the in the crosshairs of the NSA, completely tangentially involved. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's a mm. classic thing, like you know, ordinary guy mistaken for super spy kind of thing. Um, uh, no, it's, yeah. it's good. I think it ties into this what this film's trying to say, which I quite like. We'll get to later, but yeah. yeah. But anyway, he he goes home to his wife and his kid. His kid is playing video games and this movie takes place at Christmas so his kid's like oh did you get me a Christmas present can I open it can I look in the bag and the, he's like no 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 you can't you can't you can't yeah and his wife is yelling at the TV because she is very much a liberal she's very much in favor of civil rights privacy rights uh, she opposes this bill and Will Smith is uh, a not interested B thinks she's too invested and C is like in this position of sort of put upon husband who's like obliged to agree to get along uh, like the, the guy on TV who she's yelling at says something about like well sometimes you have to spy on people for national security and he kind of like agrees with him and his wife frowns at him and he's like yeah I know what I mean is that's unacceptable uh, and so as we'll see, although this movie is about Will Smith getting proven wrong here, the sort of starting point, and the starting point to make you relate to Will Smith as like an everyman, is that caring about privacy or civil liberties is for women, and also gay, and also you can care way too much about it. 
And also, like, women, am I right? Like, wives, oi. Wives be watching the TV and yelling at her. I hate it when my wife is mad about her civil liberties (laughs) being eroded. Fellas, do you come home when your wife is mad about her civil liberties being eroded? I mean, what's all that about? I hate it when my explicitly immigrant black wife is mad about civil liberties being taken away. Am I right, fellas? It's very strange. Mm -hmm. So, meanwhile, back at the NSA, we get some computer. First, they just casually fucking drop in that the new the left wing news guy dead. They killed him off screen. Yeah, murdered. Oh, uh, he's so dead. That's Deceased. like that's like easily done. Eh. Professionally <laughs> wasted. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Uh, Professionally wasted. But so instead, what they do is uh, John Voight essentially goes to Jack Black and goes, "Do computers on this until we can find out whether or not we can bully Will Smith to an <laughs> early grave." This, this, this sequence is like fucking CSI. New York shit. It's unbelievable. Jack, Bla- what Jack Black does is he says enhanced to to something <laughs> he does. so much. He gets a fucking security camera and he goes rotate the view, and I'm like, how the fuck are you doing that? Yeah, and he I does it. That, what, like- what, what, what would have to have happened for this to work is for them to have picked up the camera and like moved it on a track along the ceiling. Like that's the effect that you get. Um, but yeah, so- the thing is, this this lingerie store, the security camera setup is like in the Matrix, where they just have cameras in that perfect circle, so that you can do like special effects. <laughs> so that if I you tap see into the security camera, you can just the go the whole way yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fine. And then he brings up a 3D model of Will Smith's bags to double check whether or not something's been put. Yeah, in. he's. He's rotating a shopping bag in his mind. I'm rotating a Will Smith in my brain. <laughs> it's unbelievable. He, he's passing the Kojiati in real time. Um, find a computer to be indispensable. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so having thus enhanced, right, they still don't know. Uh, which I, I, I like that at least that, even if it's advancing the idea that this computer shit is at all plausible, that, I like that it doesn't work and you still have to guess. Yeah, they do like uh, all this insane computer data shit, and then they just go, "Oh, send the fucking Twinkle Vosses yeah, over." Yeah, send, gives a sh- send the goons. Yeah, like that's kind of the that's kind of the vibe of the movie because, as without spoiling what happens at the end, what we do see later is like all your fancy surveillance and computers. It's not as good as like having somebody with insider knowledge. Yeah, which mm. it's not as good as having one homie. That's right. Uh, uh, Why the, don't you the... simulate a fucking bro? <laughs> Yo, why don't you simulate some fucking pussy, dude? Get why don't here. you enhance your relationship with your fellow man? <laughs> <laughs> so, so... Why don't you hack tap and bypass some fucking pussy, dude? <laughs> so they they send the goons. Kick the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on like the uh, the Matrix typer. Top <laughs> ten pussy hacks. It's like... your own time you're wasting. <laughs> so Instead of spelling my name out or when I'm eating pussy, I'm doing like the the descending Matrix text. Oh my God. You're doing it <laughs> fucking binary. <Jesus> right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think that's pussy you're eating? <laughs> Oh, I know the Matrix is telling me this pussy is juicy. <laughs> well, welcome to Kill James Bond. We're doing the Matrix. Um, no, we're not. We're not. We're not. Um, so they send the dudes around, and you can the tell dudes. the dudes are going to arrive because the entire previous scene is Will Smith being like, "Everyone except me, leave the house now." Yes. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. His kids go over to his kids' mate's house. His wife goes out to drop them off, he's, presumably. He's left alone with the shitty little dog that he hates, because women be getting shitty little dogs. That's true. I've got four or five in LA. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so They're the, all in various handbags. And so the twins, the twins arrive disguised as detectives, uh, and they, they claim they're investigating the creaming of this guy, Zavitz. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're investigating an officer involved creaming. <laughs> <laughs> Not even officer involved, it was a fucking fire department Yeah, involved. fire department involved creaming. Yeah, the FDNY has creamed this dude. <laughs> <laughs> if you had got any information that could help us. Fuck, we've not even reached the inciting incident, no, sorry. No, uh, no, no. But so, it, essentially, they go, have, have you got the tape? Uh, and he goes, no, and also I'm not going to let you search my shit, I don't have anything. Come back with a warrant. And they try asking him, uh, you know, are you buying lingerie? Is it for Rachel Banks, the woman you're having an affair with? And he brazens this out with 
what I knew immediately must be a drop. If I do a little cross-dressing on the weekends, you know, you'd be surprised how a nice pair of edible panties can make a guy feel sexy. Which... He's right, he's spitting. Yeah, he's spitting. I mean, I always mm. found edible panties to be kind of like, that's a fad thing, it doesn't work. It depends which type, because you can get ones that are like, obviously they're like a little candy that you can, you can get for like Ugh. a bracelet or something, and those are the better part of fine, um, but the ones that are made out of like fucking, like, sidewinders shit, like... Huh. Un- unacceptable, completely unacceptable. I feel like I don't, I don't need like a, the bribe of candy to eat pussy. Like mm. that's right. I'm like, get this shit out of my fucking way. I need to get to the pussy. <laughs> doing, doing like delayed gratification. Yeah. The yeah. thing that I want to eat is not the panties. Like mm. the, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. The, the mean, edible panty is just like mm. it's like parsley, right? You just push it to the side before you get exactly. to eating. Exactly. Um, yeah. But the thing is, right. These these two dudes, which is, this is one of my favorite parts about the movies. These two dudes go, "Can we just double check for you whether something got put in that bag?" And he went, "Not without a warrant." And it cuts to Seth Green in the fucking like yeah. surveillance van, and he goes, "He's good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these guys killed a fucking congressman, dude. But so instead, having now oh, having fuck, now, he's right. We don't them. have a warrant. Yeah, yeah. What they do instead is they wait for him to leave the house, and then they put bugs in everything, and then trash the place. Most notably, they steal his blender, which is a big deal to Will Smith, because... Some people meditate, some people get massages. I blend. This movie forgets about this halfway through, but, like, it's his thing. He likes blending various juices. He loves this movie. They yeah. put, like, they put a bunch of bugs in his home and in his clothes and stuff, and John Voigt says, and this is quite interesting, he says, we're gonna trash this guy's reputation. Hmm. Um... Because in case he decides to go public, we are going to ensure that it's easy for everyone to dismiss him as a liar. So what's curious, uh, what's a curiously progressive idea from John Voigt here is his example, because he talks about how uh, you have to discredit him because uh, I know that it works, I've seen, like, credibility is the only currency that matters. And his example for this is, I have seen sex offenders go free because the victim was a sex worker. And it's like, oh shit, that's actually quite a good example of how you can discredit someone and how that's a bad thing. Um, but then that's, you know, what they do instead is they, they destroy his life, right? They, they leak photos of him having lunch with... Rachel. Rachel, with ex. Rachel, his ex. Mm. Just, to, having, just having lunch. Literally just having lunch. Yeah, as, we, as we find out, he has previously cheated on his wife with Rachel. And so he... I think presumably has like sworn he would never see her again. They went through a year of counselling, and so when she sees the uh, the the photos of them together, she knows that he's been lying to her. Um, she doesn't think to question the fact that you know she's been literally couriered photos, like glossy mm-hmm. photos of of him with yeah. her. But like he gets fired, his bank accounts and his credit cards all get shut down. And um, this is why I quite like this film and I think yeah, it's, it's saying something which more people should say nowadays like be, like there's so much mass surveillance these days and a lot of people seem to have this attitude of like if you don't have anything to hide there's nothing wrong with it mm. and what this movie says quite clearly is like no there, there will be little innocuous details in your life like having lunch with someone that if they are taken out of context and presented in a negative light can make you appear guilty even if you've done nothing wrong like to a certain extent your guilt or innocence is a function of how much the government is paying attention to you yes so it's bad for them to have the power to do that anyway even if you've got nothing to hide yeah it's it, you can use innuendo you can just straight up manufacture stuff yeah um it's i i think it's a very good point and i agree completely however one thing I will say is that he gets fired from his Washington DC law firm for having an affair, which is funny in and of itself. But yeah, then, very odd that. But then when he gets fired, they ask him, have you been having an affair? And he asks one of the partners, You ever beat off in the shower, Brian? You ever have any homosexual thoughts? <laughs> Brian should have just gone, yep. <laughs> <laughs> The dude playing Brian also like really really sells that really well because he yeah. is, is so clearly like oh what am I what why am I involved? He's <laughs> like look at him like oh, oh. yeah. The, the reason Will Smith asks that and again this is a scene I like is Brian's like that's not relevant. Will Smith's like that's right. It's none of my fucking business. Yeah, it's good. But so his wife kicks him out. There's some really yes. odd Dutch angle editing in this scene. Only the weirdest of cameras. This movie isn't shot very well. Like the cinematography yeah, isn't yeah, very good. That's the thing. 
doesn't really know what to do if it's not spinning around a national monument. No. He meets Rachel again. This whole meeting is spied on, of course. Oh yeah, like extensively. They're going to really like exacting detail of exactly how spied on this meeting is. Yes. Like the, everyone's got a fucking shotgun mic. There's a homeless guy with a shotgun mic. There's dudes in all the buildings around. Um, and for quite just a s- sort of standard conversation between these two people. <laughs> yes. But immediately, because they're having the conversation, that is spread out onto the news again, used for, as further uh, to yeah. push this guy away from his wife and kids. He's also accused of having, of having mob ties. Uh, we also see that all, all of his cards, all of his bank accounts are frozen, so he can't even get a hotel. Um, he's getting gaslit by everyone on Earth. For like yeah. two, at this stage, like he seeds. thinks it's the mob. He thinks it's the he thinks it's the mafia who are doing this because he doesn't know about the NSA because he's just he's still a blue pill libcock. Yes. Yeah, he still doesn't even know he has this fucking tape. So he's just like, "Fuck that!" This mob guy has a lot of connections, huh? Yeah, Very yeah. strange. <laughs> so he says to Rachel, "I need to meet Brill. Brill's your guy. I need to know who it is." And she's like, "Well, I only ever meet him like on a ferry. I do dead drops on a ferry, so yeah." Um. So he goes to a ferry. Yeah, he goes to a ferry, and uh, he is immediately met by Gabriel Byrne appearing in this movie. Yeah! And Gabriel Byrne effortlessly works him. He goes, hey, are you the guy I'm meeting? And Will Smith spills everything. He goes, oh, holy shit, are you Byrne? Uh, Rachel, uh, are you Byrne? Are you Brill? Are you Brill? Uh, Rachel sent me, uh, thanks for doing all of that PI work for me. Um... Here's everything yeah, to, that's to going gain on. Some trust. Uh, this fake Brill here, he like pretends to have fished out one of the tracking devices on Will Smith at this point. There are like six tracking devices on Will Smith. Uh, he like takes his shoe off and he's like, "Look, they've got a fucking tracker in here, man." I really, really like this because I didn't immediately realize that this was a fake, fake Brill. That's good. Yeah, it's well it set up to not notice. Yeah, it's, it's very really, really good. It's, and then later on, when we meet the real Brill, Gene Hackman, he's like. Will Smith's like, but I just met Brill, and he's like, did you? Did he tell you his name was Brill, or did you say that? And he agreed with it. And it's like, oh my fucking god! It was good. It was slick. Um, but so it was really, really good. He, get, he gets into Brill's fake taxi, or fake Brill's fake taxi, um, right. and he he's in the back, and he's he's talking about how you know the NSA has has ruined his life. Um, mm. You have something for this? They took everything from me. You know, they took my family. <laughs> Which is, it's really funny because he's like one day into this and he's already like weepy. Yeah, it's like they took his family and what has actually happened is his wife is mad at him and he's been out of the house for like a day. His wife's mad at him for hanging out with a woman that he cheated on her with and promised he would never go back to. Like, this is a legitimate L he's taking on this one, bud. Did yes. I tell you that a friend of a friend saw Graham Linehan recently and went up to him? Did I tell you guys this? No. Oh, no. A friend of a friend saw Graham Linehan and went up to him in public um, and said, your wife didn't leave you because of trans people, your wife left you because you're an arsehole. <laughs> and he just went, okay, groomer, and was just like yelling at her as she walked away, like, <laughs> fucking <laughs> bodied. Bitch made. Ah, uh, atrocious. So- it's, it's always, it's a fun, safe, and legal thrill to make fun of dickheads to them in person. Mm-hmm. Mm. Republican uh, senators, things of this nature. Yeah, but so they're they're being chased. The fake taxi is being chased by a guy in a pickup truck who he assumes is you know the mob or the NSA or someone. Um, but then just as fake Brill is about to is about to shoot him, they're rammed from behind by this pickup truck. About to professionally waste him. About to professionally waste him, and that's that's Gene Hackman. That's real Brill. Yes. Who more or less sort of bundles Lex him Luther. into a twentieth century's greatest criminal mind. <laughs> <laughs> Who more or less sort of like bundles him into a hotel elevator, uh, takes some of the bugs off him and puts them in, in a little crisp packet because of the reflective foil, um, and explains to him what the NSA is, which it seems quaint now is the thing. But this movie it, in 1998, it was the the NSA was not very publicly well known, um, and I think a lot of people watching this movie would have been like the NSA what. Uh, I didn't even know this federal agency existed. There's so many federal agencies, is the fucking thing. Like, there's so many alphabet boys. It's not. It's oh, not sure. your fault like, if you don't know all of yeah, them. Yeah, but the, we the, work for all of them. That's right. That's right. But well, the, each of us works for a different one. <laughs> yeah, but the, the NSA occupied the same sort of profile in 1998 as something like like the ISA might now. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like it, yeah, you, exactly you, intelligence support activity, uh, like uh, kind of thing that you've heard of if you're me. Um, yeah, the assay group, the, 
the real FBI. yeah the, the, the real yeah NRAG. NRAG. <laughs> the cia clowns uh, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do a series of movies again i i miss, yeah, I I miss that too. yeah um but so he takes him up on the roof and he goes the mm -hmm. nsa is spying on you uh the nsa spy on anybody uh, it's it's called mass surveillance, and it's it, like I guess you can think about it as it's wild that in 1998 people would have been scandalized by any of this, and how how f bad things have gotten now. That if you go, oh, the federal government can read all of your emails, it can listen to all of your phone calls, uh, notwithstanding all of the stuff that we've talked about about mass, mass surveillance and how it works before, and what I'm going to say about that later. I think if you say that to most people now, they just kind of like go, "So what?" You know, that's that, that's just like yeah, widely reported. Like, do you know that Jack Black can just create a three D render of your pussy in a, in a computer <laughs> based on a still image? And everyone's like, "Yeah, I believe it." Yeah, um, but because you keep asking him not to, but he won't stop. <laughs> it was it was genuinely so brutal that Edward Snowden leaked uh, a, a shitload of information about mass surveillance, which had in the end no impact. <laughs> Are you going to say that he leaked a shitload of information about your pussy? Yeah, he leaked a shitload of information about my pussy, uh, and then fled to Russia. Three D renders of my pussy. He's That's a right. shit. That's I don't right. believe this. <laughs> um, but so because because Gene Hackman has not found all of the bugs, the NSA is still trailing Will Smith, and Gene Hackman goes, yes. "Okay, stay away from me. Stay away from uh, from Rachel. Don't make any phone calls. You'll probably be dead soon. So bye." And leaves. Um, and what we get then is a chase scene through the hotel, but we have to do some more comedy Asians. Yeah, this most of this chase scene through the hotel is really good, but the there is a hotel the from hell. This dude's in the hotel from hell. Holy shit! <laughs> this dude's in the House of a Dead Three. Um, he's doing his best, all right. But there, there is um, yeah. There's just one aspect of this scene which I really am not a fucking huge fan of, which is as he's going down this hotel, he realizes that he's trapped, right? There are some guys coming up behind him, in front of him, and he just, like, knocks on the door and, like, gets let in by the guy because they think he's room yeah. service. Mr. Like Wu. Mr. Wu. Um, and while he's in there, he he's just, like, glad handing him. He's like, ah, the hotel just wants to, just to double check that you're all doing so well. And then he eventually just gives in. He's like, fuck, I definitely still have at least one tracker in my clothes. So he just starts stripping uh, down to the briefs, down to the tank top. And the Mr. Wu's wife... Mrs. Wu. Miss Wu, mm -hmm. naturally, uh, begins... To sort of like celebrate as he's doing this, and mm -hmm. it's not subtitled anyway. So as I said on the fucking Syriana episode, it's not. It's being used to add like audio confusion to the scene. Yes, this is really fucking bad. It's really yeah. bad. She's like like tipping him like money. She thinks he's a stripper. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's like used as comic relief while the guys are trying to get in from the outside. Yeah, so there are uh, guys shouting from the outside. He's shouting. This this uh, lass is also like making a lot of noise as well. And it's all it's supposed to give you a feeling of claustrophobia and panic, and it does. But I I really don't like that they're using foreign speech. Yeah. To to get that across, it's yeah. really really bad. Yeah, I mean, you could have gone with Dutch, right? You could have because yeah. the, the, the setup is like they're they're foreign. They don't know what's happening. Yeah, do the same joke from Super Troopers, where it's a German couple. You'd yeah, like they, to party. Yeah, it could have been like French, German, like yeah. like Dutch. You could've know, you didn't have to do it with like a couple from a racial minority. Sure, um, that's right. Uh, but so uh, Will Smith like escapes. He steals a bathrobe. Uh, he locks himself in a supply closet and then sets the hotel on fire in order to get himself out. Um, mm. He accidentally starts a bigger fire than he meant to. Yeah, he's yes. like rescued in an ambulance, and he ends up like stealing. He grabs a cop's service weapon. Uh, he and does. Then, yes, for safe yeah. and legal, you <laughs> can do it. That goes a lot better than I thought it was gonna. <laughs> yeah, he Every have... time I do that, I get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, he just like it's like a zoom in on the cop's gun, and it's like I could grab that. And he does, and it works out perfectly for him. There's a Take moral a here for you, the viewer. Take a chance. Who knows what will happen? Yeah. Um, so he he lets himself out of the ambulance at gunpoint, and we get a long uh, legally, chase. This is scene. not legal advice. No. Uh, we get a long, long chase scene through some tunnels. Uh, we get a lot more Seth Green riffing. Uh, at one point, he like descends into the sewers, and it turns into like a sewer chase level. Yeah. Yeah, that's odd. Moral: There was a sewer man. 
like yeah he just goes down <laughs> yeah. into the fucking sewer and i'm like you got him there's no way out of here so he goes everyone like chasing him down he comes back up again this is really good right because what's what's powerful at this point is that the instigating incident this fucking like the footage of a dude murking ed markey from earlier mm-hmm. is like so fucking far removed from will smith that it's not even in your mind at this point he doesn't have it he doesn't even know where it is He's just yeah, sort he's of yeah, completely unaware of why this is happening. So it it really you're fully in his like mind state of just complete panic and confusion. It's it's very effective. Yeah, uh, but he he ends up switching places with I think a construction worker. Yes, he does. Which is really good. He runs up to his construction worker who's just having a good time, like cleaning the ground it seems uh, yeah. and he just like holds him at gunpoint and the sentence he uses he goes normally i wouldn't do this <laughs> <laughs> yeah really- yeah sure mm-hmm. they say that a lot i bet um i do a little cross dressing so he he takes the guys <laughs> <laughs> he takes the guys clothes he switches clothes with them. yeah he does mm-hmm. um, he does a little cross dressing yeah he does a little cross dressing and, and uh, then he goes home and he, he escapes and he goes home and meets his wife and he's like, I did not have an affair. I didn't mm. touch that woman. Yep. Um, here's a gun. Yeah. Um, she, she, she's wearing the lingerie that he got her for Christmas already. Very and, strange scene. Yeah. yeah. Odd, odd. It's just so we can have a woman in lingerie, isn't it? it yeah. Um, and they, they do have like quite a little quick figure out because he's like, somebody thinks there was something in the bag that I brought home, but there's definitely nothing there unless our son went looking for his Christmas presents and took it. And they're yeah. like, oh, fuck, the kid has it. They have, they have like, good chemistry, too. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's you, a nice it, scene. They sell it well. It's really good. And I didn't see it coming. I was like, oh, fuck, like, yeah, you did kind of set it up. Well done. Um, so Will Smith rides with the nanny to go and pick up uh, their child. Mm-hmm. Jack Black pervs on her. Yes, yeah, there's a Strange line guy. here. I, I have this line. Um, as as the nanny is like leaving the house, Jack Black unprompted goes. Doesn't shave her legs, Jesus! Women like that are so hot. Batman Just... voice. Then you're gonna love me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think there's something here in that. This is like potentially. This is a line about how inherently sexualized and creepy it is to surveil anyone, but especially a woman, right? But what this oh, actually yeah, what this yeah. actually comes off as and what it's written as is it's funny for a guy to be attracted to like women with body hair. That's yes. right. Because yeah. uh, it's really gay. not good. Um mm-hmm. yeah. but so he, he gets the like Game Boy with the, the tape back from his son. Uh, and then sort of learning his tradecraft on the fly, he he gets the um the surveillance van moved by calling the cops on them, which is nice. nice yeah, that's touch. quite funny. It's funny to do that, you should. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you think you're being spied upon, call the cops. You know? Uh, yeah. But <laughs> like There's a van outside that hasn't moved all day. I think people might be doing drugs in there. Can you just go double check? Yeah. Um, and like, what was good is that they the, the guys in the van hear the police radar. Yeah, and one like, of them is ah, like, oh, yeah, us. that's us. <laughs> um, but so he, he breaks into Rachel's apartment to find that uh, she has been not not a, not even suicided, but he is being framed for her murder. They've taken his clothes from the hotel. They have like strewn them around her body. She's been professionally wasted. Yeah, she has been professionally wasted. Re- remember the woman from this movie who hasn't been in it for like fifteen minutes? Yeah. Fridged. Professionally wasted. Um, <laughs> fridged character development for Will. Right. Mm. Yeah. Also, yeah. there are photographs around her flat of her with Gene Hackman. Yeah, and he goes, that's wait right. a second, that's famous actor Gene Hackman. Like, I think he'll be, <laughs> oh, a, shit, he'll be, be in a movie with him. Yeah, he'll be in this movie in a minute. Is that Lex Luthor? <laughs> I, I want to apologize to Is Gene that the Hackman. Guy from Mississippi uh, Burning? Or the estate of Gene Hackman if he happens to be dead. I haven't double checked. Oh, I, I, had, I did it again. I saw Gene Hackman. I was like, oh, yeah, Robert De Niro. <laughs> and I just thought it was Robert De Niro for the entire Can we make the episode out the picture of Gene Hackman no. with Robert De Niro in the Mark Strong font? He's uh, Robert De Niro coded. I don't so, know. So, my best here. He's Robert De Niro coded and a Robert, minor. Robert De Niro coded. Uh, I prefer we use the term Italian Americans. So. <laughs> <laughs> well done. So, well done. We also, oh, for fuck's sake. We also, we also get a moment at home with John Voight, where he's being extremely normal, drinking a big glass of milk, um, and we mm. see we see his wife, right, who is 
kind of a Lady Macbeth figure. She's like, you know, you could have made deputy director in two years or three years. But the problem is the casting. What they've done is they've given John Voight an insanely hot wife. Yeah, it's Skylar from fucking um, and it, Breaking Bad. It doesn't. It doesn't work. I because look, put put it this way, right? If I'm if I'm John Voight in this movie, I would never go to work at the at the NSA <laughs> no, because I'd be real. too busy drinking the sweat out of her fucking shoes. It's no, it's unbelievable. He walks into the bedroom and like Skylar White is in there, and I just was like, secretary. Like I just there was no part of my brain that was like <laughs> these two are in a relationship. <laughs> no, no. And yet, yeah, and the 3D render of the pussy. Exactly. Like, yeah. Um, printing it out like a fucking specter mask. <laughs> Fuck me. So, uh, so Will Smith, he goes to find the real Brill again. He looks good in this scene. He's looking really good. He's gone like full undercover dude mode. So he's wearing, yeah, like, he's got like the long big coat. coat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He looks a bit like Amy Pierce. Um, well, no, he looks a little bit like somebody from The Matrix. But like this is two years before the Matrix, which is presumably why he was considered for the role of Neo, and indeed offered the role of Neo. Hmm. Oh shit! Speaking of being offered roles, this is well within the sort of the Kill James Bond bailiwick. This movie because they wanted old Connery for this. I love it when something's within my bailiwick. Yeah, they they old wanted Connery. Old Connery was working for the NSC. <laughs> I'm assuming not to play Will Smith. It's called Mashavilch. Um I find a computer indispensable. Indispensable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm logging on to the internet. <laughs> no, they wa- they wanted old Connery for real Brill, Gene Hackman, who is very grumpy. He doesn't want anything to do with Will Smith until he finds out that Rachel has been killed. Um, and he's like a father figure to her. We don't find out why yet, but they go to the back cave. Yes, yeah. Well, the, well, first they go to a service station where Will Smith immediately blows their cover by making a phone call to his wife, I think it is. Just to be like, hey, yeah. you know, just checking in. It's been a day since I've seen you. Uh, he's yeah, a wife immediately guy. immediately he does. He's a wife yeah. guy. It's sweet. Um, but what's, what's nice about this is the choice to film the entire inside of the uh, convenience store from the security camera's perspective. Yeah, that's good. Which is really good. But so we go to the Batcave, the Baltimore Batcave, uh, which right. is a, a Faraday cage. Um, and uh, Gene Hackman explains the NSA again, and he explains the concept of mass surveillance and, and signals intelligence more generally. Yes. And I mean, I'm going to do Alice analysis again because I have to. Let's go. So we talked before in the Bourne movies about how there's a difference between mass data collection and mass data interpretation, right? And how. Uh, the finished product of intelligence that you deliver to people is stuff that you have like uh, you've collected and you've sorted and you've analyzed, and that what most mass surveillance is doing is collecting what GCHQ calls unselected data. Right? It's just everything, um, and then you search that for the stuff that you want to find. In many ways, like the current environment for mass surveillance is much worse than what Gene Hackman describes now because of the internet, but it's still not the way that he describes it, which is you use any kind of keyword, you you say anything on the phone that's being understood in real time, uh, c- because it just isn't, because it can't be. It, that has to go through a person at some point, and inevitably it's going to be some, if you're lucky, early 20s analyst who is badly overworked anyway, and who has to differentiate. Like, if you feed that person or that, you know, a group of 300 people every instance of somebody tweeting in Minecraft that day, and then go, okay, pick out all the people who actually want to kill a Supreme Court justice, that's, it's a very difficult task, and there's a difference. Look, hell yeah, base. (laughs) (laughs) And give him a fave. I'm just I'm just saying that the like the process of intelligence collection that starts with this unselected data is it's it's more involved than just the government is listening to you all the time. Yeah. But I mean in our jobs working for the intelligence agency, right. we see so many 3D renders of pussies every day that we're just desensitized to it. Well, they're just coming by. I've got like three monitors at all just 3D renders of pussies. It's mm-hmm. yeah. It's yeah. unfortunate. It's rotating a pussy in my I mind. I have to be like, which one of these pussies wants to take <laughs> down the federal government? <laughs> we, which one of these pops the most? That's what the government <laughs> wants to know. 
<laughs> you actually have an analogy to to warrantless uh, warrantless surveillance and like mass data collection in the form of Google, most notably. Like uh, mm. Google, Meta, all these companies, they collect huge amounts of data uh, for for much the same reasons, which is to say to have it and then go back and look through it. Uh, and in the same way that like Google might scrape all of your data in order that someone might Google it, the NSA might take all of your metadata so that they can put it through their own search engine, X key score or whatever. Um, but yeah, no, it's, okay. it's it works. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but I mean, one thing I will say is that, and a point in this movie's favor is that the NSA hated it when it came out. It was yeah. it was considered to have done huge public relations damage to them, mm. um, as well it might have done. More films should do huge public relations damage to government departments. I feel. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like the the critique of this is is technical rather than philosophical. Like the we know that the NSA has been and is doing and will continue to do a lot of evil shit, um, and is you know if anything much less troubled about it than John Voight is in this movie. So the NSA hated it because it was, you know, not because it was particularly accurate in depicting them, but because it was, you know, it got closer to the spirit of the thing that made them look guys. like assholes. Yeah, exactly. When was the last time a film came out that thoroughly discredited a government department? I mean, I, Daniel Blake, is the most recent one I can think of. Yeah, it's, it's been a minute. Yeah, it's becoming more okay to do it again recently. Uh, mm. It definitely the, the fact that this is a 1998 movie is definitely the only reason they were able to, like, make a movie where the bad guy just categorically is the NSA. Yeah. Because, holy shit, you could not do that a couple of years afterwards. Yeah, it's not like it's a rogue department within the NSA. It's just no, it's... the real thing doing what they're meant to do. We do kind of get an attempt to draw this distinction a little bit in that uh, Gene Hackman looks up John Voight. Uh, he, he looks him up on like uh, the internal phone book or whatever. Uh, That's right. And, and he goes, this guy isn't an operator. He's not tactical like I was when I was in the NSA. He's a politician. This guy's not Yeah, based. yeah, he doesn't respect the troops. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, this is, this is sort of his own private ass-covering exercise. But because, yeah. because Will Smith made a phone call, uh, this is enough to lead the NSA back to the Baltimore Batcave. And oh, at this point, they have decrypted the tape and they've learned the truth of the murder. Yes. I completely forgot that because it's like sort of almost ancillary at this point. Who cares about this? The tape actually becomes not a problem in a minute. Um, but yes. there's a there's <laughs> when they find out that like Voight is is behind this. Um, they they read out his birthday and his birthday uh, is yes. night. I oh. literally have this. Uh, he, go they, right ahead, my love. Nine eleven. <laughs> wow, Nineteen ninety eight. Let's have it again. <laughs> it was nine eleven. <laughs> Damn. This this movie predicted, predicted 9 11. Yeah, That's predicted crazy. 9 11. Um, I do a little cross dressing. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's honestly said with the cadence of we do a little trolling. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So they attack, and Gene Hackman blows up the Batcave. Yes, and there's another car chase. Will Smith gets set on fire, which is kind of a cool there's stunt. There's a cat in in the Batcave. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's okay. Cave. Don't worry, it's fine. Because every time it's on screen, they do like a pathetic little mew noise over the top. So you remember the cats there. Yeah. Also, we get an example of something that I always love in a movie, which is the cat is the calmest cat I've ever seen in my life being picked up. But to add a little bit of threat, they dub over the sound of like an angry cat. <laughs> and you can see that it's just not that. Okay. It's really yeah. good. I love yeah. that shit. Um, so we get a car chase. Um, they, they eventually evade them by by like ducking between some Conrail, in fact, trains. Mm. But in the course of this, uh, the car gets set on fire and it melts the disc, which is now useless. It's, there's now the tape is now destroyed. Yeah, there's no video evidence anymore of uh, this congressman getting professionally wasted. So, w what they then do is they have a bit of a fight. Gene Hackman apologizes and says, "I get cranky when I when my blood sugar is low." Would you like to make people's war in a Maoist sense upon the National <laughs> Security Agency? And Will like, Smith goes, you son based. of a bitch. Absolutely. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the NSA figure out who Gene Hackman is, and they're like, he was in Mississippi Burning with Willem Dafoe. <laughs> he was yes. in Superman, like, one, two, three, and four. Um, respect the troops. 
Uh, his partner was Rachel's father, so he was he was yeah. abandoned in Iran. He got Jason Bourne. He got fucking George Clooney. Yeah, it doesn't quite make any sense. But one thing I do like is that when he's te- when he tells Will Smith this, we don't get the sort of like principled spy. He's like, no, I loved it. I really liked it. Uh, I under- I don't even blame them for you know for burning me. That was fine. That was what they had to do. Yeah, there's a nice uh, there's a nice moment where he says, um, you know, the job is kind of so so, but the people are really lovely, and like you get to travel. And I was like. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, a realistic, down to earth uh, yeah, description so, of what it's like being a sort of evil spy or a podcaster. Um, mm. But so he he then explains the concept of people's war in a Maoist sense. He explains the concept of guerrilla warfare, which is you know they, they are large, so they're unwieldy. You are small and mobile, and you can strike unexpectedly, uh, and you can use their own weapons against them, which they do. They take the surveillance devices that they've gotten off of Will Smith, and they use them to bug a congressman. Who is in favor of this uh, this surveillance bill? Uh, that we'll... again, this is another thing that doesn't quite make sense, right? Is the um, the sort of not named as such, but the Patriot Act in this movie is that if the if the NSA can do all of this shit anyway, and we see them do it, what difference does it make to legalize it? Well, because governments always legalize the things that they do already, right? So, oh, like the, the the new like police and crime bill legalizes a lot of the sort of horrific things that British police have been doing for a while. The Nationality and Borders Bill legalizes the brutal treatment that we've been doing for a while. It's just a way of like, because like legal challenges take time to bring, right? And it's just a way of like heading those off at the pass. Yeah, and it's, it's sort of law's sanction, I suppose. Um, and I, I guess it like, to me, it hits differently for something that's like an explicitly like clandestine activity. Um, also, there's a line in here because they, they videotape the congressman uh, having an affair with a staffer and Gene Hackman jokingly says to Will Smith, I think you're too young to watch this part here. And he goes, yes, yeah, so is she, which is a line that hits very differently post-Epstein. Mm. Mm. <laughs> not great. <laughs> I mean, eh, whatever, it's not. It, it, it is very funny that, that Gene Hackman goes, okay, let's, let's go to war against the NSA. Step one, dox a congressman. He just does that from his laptop in, in the He's van. like, all right, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He um, embraces Devon Thought. That's right. That's fucking They do it right. to John Voight too. They make it look. They give John Voight a taste of his own medicine by making it look like he's having an affair. Yeah, uh, his his insanely hot wife doesn't understand why their bank accounts are suddenly being frozen and why he's getting flowers uh, from you know mysterious admirers and stuff. That's that's a fucking flag. That's a great idea. I read that went down. If I want to discredit someone, I'm just going to send them flowers, being like, "Thank <laughs> you for making a 3D render of my pussy last night." <laughs> Uh, we, we we also do get the distinction after all between the like good NSA and the bad NSA because we see that John Voigt is about to get in trouble at work. Uh, the 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 NSA director who you know correctly is an admiral uh, is is like um, you know if this is if this is at all sanctioned because the congressman finds the bug they put on him as they intended him to do. Uh, he goes you know if if anyone is running this privately they're going to go to fucking prison off of this. Something I wanted to discuss a little, and I I got somewhat distracted and forgot to bring it up, is that the entire time that they're in the diner talking about like what they've lost in, oh, yeah, in yeah. doing people's war against the, it, 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 the film keeps cutting to a woman feeding her kids on like a, a different table in the diner, and it's yeah. so very like, I miss wife. I wish wife was here. This is <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Release my wife. Yeah. Miss wife. Yeah. Mm. Oh, sorry, um, yeah, you're right. Release my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Gene Hackman arranges a meeting with John Voight, um, and uh, he's uh, he he appears to like turn Will Smith in. He's like, "I want my old life back. This is where Will Smith I is. This is where the tape pay, is." Which yeah, is like yeah, it's quite cool. Million dollars. And John Voight turns it around on him. John Voight like gives this big speech about democracy and surveillance and stuff, and and we quickly discover that he's like. He's filibustering. He's playing for time because they're closing in on Will Smith's location as he's doing this. And I was like, oh, fuck, like John Voight, one step ahead. Well done. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, and, and so what they end up doing is capturing the both of them uh, in, in the back of the surveillance van. And, and John Voight tries to like... I, it starts raining thematically within seconds of them yes. getting captured. It's really funny. <laughs> Will Smith gets captured and immediately is like pissing it down. Yeah. Jo- so J- John Voight tries to interrogate him about where the tape is, shoots Gene Hackman in the hand. This whole time it's being like secretly recorded by um, 
By Jack Black. By Jack Black, who has had an attack of conscience, I guess. Um, yeah, or an attack of self-preservation, something. It's something. Never it's, it sort quite... of implies that that was facilitated by by these two guys who are just like... Seth his Green? real name? Gene Hackman, please help Gene me. Hackman. Gene Hackman. <laughs> this is like, how could you do this? You've killed these people. Is everyone here okay with that? You all realize he's killed people for this, right? And immediately yeah. Jack Black goes, oh, shit. Yeah, so recording my boss. Yeah, it, it's well. nice. It's um, he's he's like I am now recording locally. Um, <laughs> it is it is quite fun because it's kind of like well, if you record everybody and you don't trust anybody, then don't be surprised when people don't trust you and they give you the bit of a taste of your own medicine. Ooh, it sucks to get recorded, doesn't um, it, big man? But John Voight's like, yo, where are the tape at though? Yeah, and and Will Smith goes, who's the only other person I know? Uh, it, it's <laughs> my it, wife. It's, it's it's with it's with this Italian guy. I uh, dropped off with this Italian guy. It's, it's, it's at the the totally legitimate business club, and you have to come in with me and get it. Uh, and and so when they get there, the FBI surveillance post, of course, noticed them because surveillance can be good and useful. You just have to like use it to your advantage. Um, uh, and, and so you know they 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 spot them going in, and then Gene Hackman contrives an excuse. He makes like he's going to throw up in the van so that they see him. Uh, come out of the van with his like shot hand. He's like disguised as a cop to to try and like it, force the FBI to raid the place, mm-hmm. which does work. But yeah, on on the inside, Will Will is there and he's just like lying by omission. So like the Italian American guy is just like, hey, who's this fucking? Dis- uh, who's this guy? I don't give a shit. <laughs> I love um, this fucking scene. Yeah, this, this, this is this is where the guy does say, "Felonious cock sucking with an attempt to swallow." Which, it, this it it's real Godzilla vs Kong shit, right? Because he yeah. just like walks in, and he's like, "This guy wants his tape back," yeah, uh, which Fed immediately mob makes Voight think that this is the guy he's dropped the tape off with, and makes the Italian American guy think that this is the guy that made the tape of him. And now they're both unbelievably mad at it's each other. So it, contrived. It's, it's really funny though because you've got like one one half of the table is all these like mob guys who are like, "Hey, oh," and on the other half you've got like John Voight and Jack Black. <laughs> As, like, fans. And in the middle, you've got Will Smith. <laughs> it's a really fucking good scene. It's so. Um, it's. And they get like, into a Mexican a standoff, of course. Yeah, yeah, they do. Which, I mean, I. We, we've known this was coming for a while, and I only have one thing to say. Normally, I would be shot for being Italian. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, but it, they, they all shoot each other. Will Smith's, like, Will Smith survives completely unscathed. Mm-hmm. It's very bad. Will, Will Smith this. goes into that scene like I'm in the process of dealing with these Guido motherfuckers, and so he does. <laughs> <laughs> and he fuck me, does he? My yeah. God, does he? They are dealt with. Everybody, <clears throat> everybody gets killed apart from Jack Black, who is like lightly wounded. Gene Hackman escapes. He he, Jason Bournes. He does the thing of like running between a like a the camera and a moving vehicle and just disappears. And uh, Jack Black survives and gives the FBI the recording of John Voight being like, I'm John Voight and I love to do crime. Um, and he says, oh, I thought it was all the training operation. I had nothing to do with any of this. Clever, and, clever, clever. You know, the, the FBI's the rescue, the, the upstanding moral federal agency, which has Thank never God spied on anyone. the cops. Um, and Will right. Smith uh, is cleared. He goes home to his wife um, and she's like, who watches the Watchmen, Will Smith? Um, and his house is bugged. Gene Hackman bugged his house. Mm-hmm. In order to send him a message that's like, hey, how's it going? I'm in Aruba or whatever. I'm on the beach. Which is, you know, normalize bugging your best friend's house to send them a little, like, thank you card as a joke. Brick, chimp, things <laughs> of this nature. Yes, yeah, exactly. A, a standoff between the mafia, the NSA, and the FBI. I just call that. An argument on an episode of Kill James Bond. <laughs> Brick. Let me bust. <laughs> <laughs> and that's we have a science based surveillance system on this podcast. We do. Let's, let's wrap it up with it. Let's corral some closing thoughts here. This yes. movie, uh, this podcast as a whole, is about masculinity. Do any of us have it? any? thoughts about what this movie uh, says about masculinity? Being a man is about not caring about civil rights until you're literally forced to. Uh, Women have tiny dogs and be caring about civil rights. It's about missing your wife when you're away from her for more than like a day. It's about ass and titties. It it is. is Yeah, there's there's definitely ass and titties on uh, on display. 
Mm-hmm. A three mm-hmm. model of a pussy. I do a little cross dressing. <sighs> Devin, do you have any thoughts about how this film relates to masculinity? I think I, I think I weighed it up earlier one, but it's I just I really appreciate how on the nose the scene is where they're talking about what they've lost and it keeps just showing like a woman <laughs> taking care Wife. of some kids. Yeah. Because it's such like a look at these two hard men. They're missing that feminine tenderness in their life. And it's such like a it's like oh and it's, come on. It, yeah. Ev- everything politically has gotten much worse since this movie. We've become inured to much worse and much more intrusive surveillance. Uh, That's both, right. Both in a mass sense and in a targeted sense. Uh, and, you know, uh, like three years after this movie, 9 11 happened. Sorry, no. Uh, like three years after this movie, 9 11 happened. And the, the Patriot Act got passed, and like all the shit that was, you know, an unthinkable worst case scenario in this movie has just already been legal for 21, 22 years. Uh, but I remember when all these increased uh, surveillance measures came in. Mm. Uh, when I was two. Yeah. And uh, I remember at the time being told that they were temporary and would be withdrawn once the threat has passed. So we look forward to that <laughs> happening any day. The state, now. The state That's of a great emergency episode of Philosophy Two about that. It's it? always well, temporary. Uh, and if, if you if you read your, your Schmidt, you will know that, you know, the, the power of the state is to define a you know a state of exception. Uh, but uh, we, we already d- have Three D render of your pussy. We have uh, a three D. We, we have a three D render of your pussy on this podcast. It's called the Scum System. Uh, I don't. What I was saying. <laughs> for, uh, okay. for sexism, cultural insensitivity, unprovoked violence, misogyny. Now, smarm, I think, is the first one, but yes. Oh yeah, so it is. Uh, se- sexism, sexism and misogyny. Yeah, listen, I, ca- in, I just care about women so much, so much. that I'm that I'm willing to de- I'm willing to yeah. dedicate. Two of our four uh, like rating <laughs> systems: sexism, chicks, <laughs> sexism, uh, women, chicks. and misogyny. Wait, are you spelling women with a with a U? There? Uh, uh, women. women, uteruses, uterus ah. havers, Uter- uterus having. Women. Some men have a uteri, but but mainly women. That's right. Just like that hang there. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> some men do. I know some. Yeah, they do. So do I. Yeah. Uh, Anna, of course. So do I. <laughs> Smum, cultural insensitivity. somewhere. Cultural mm-hmm. insensitivity, unprovoked violence, misogyny. How smarmy would we say that this movie is? Uh, Seth Green is always doing bits. Mm, yeah, yeah, but it, it's like that's a bad thing because he's sarcastic and they steal his blender. Um, mm. I mean, Will Smith does some bits. Uh, he just he says some things. He says didn't secrete it into any of my bodily orifices. He, sa- he says, I do a little cross dressing. Change the configuration of Dean's packages. You ever have any homosexual thoughts? You know, just a few things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bust. The movie <laughs> it isn't sucking itself off that hard. That's so, true. Is the That's thing. True. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which, which to me is quite a low smum. It's, it's relatively a... like po faced. One mm. or two? I could do a one. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hey, yeah, why not? Cultural no. insensitivity. Chicks. Oh boy. Uh, well, I mean, first of all, it's crimes against the Italian American people. Um, mm-hmm. Immediately bump it up to a seven, and then also it's racist against Asians. So, like, I go deal with these Guido motherfuckers. Tw- Twenty-five. Yeah, it's 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 not great. Um, the just the, specifically that scene in the hotel bumps up by like three points to me because come the fuck on. Four, mm. five. I don't seven. know. I, four, yeah, yeah, okay. four. I'm happy. Four. Four. Un- unprovoked violence, very little. Like he only even shoots back at them a couple of times when they're when they're chasing him. Yeah, true. Um, oh, they cannot provoke this guy into violence. So there's, yeah, yeah no, he, very, runs. Very he runs. He runs. None, if anything. Yeah, yeah, he's he's like doing sort of north by northwest instead of like any kind of action hero mold, which I quite like. We don't get enough yeah, of those good. movies. Uh, it's good. Zero. I yeah, we need we need more movies where a guy isn't like forced into becoming like a mm. fucking action hero. Which, by the way, is the movie we're doing next for fucking bonuses. Yeah. Guy gets <laughs> yeah. forced into becoming an action hero. I just like it when a schmuck gets like becomes in the crosshairs and is like, "Holy shit!" and yeah. spends the entire movie going, "Holy shit!" At instead some, of at some point, we're gonna have to do actually North by Northwest. Mm. Uh, That'd be quite fun. I'd like that. Mm. And, and then, misogyny. Misogyny. And misogyny. Oh, Wife? I mean. Wife, I miss wife. Where's miss wife? Wife, where's wife? Wife, that's what women are for. Uh, wife mad at me for hanging out with titties. women I cheated on her with. Uh-huh. I believe yeah. this. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still kind of portrayed as if that's unfair on Will Smith, which w- it women, isn't. W- women like to be doing... Liberal hysteria. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They do. So I think, you know, I could go like... I think I'd do a four for this. I was going to say five. Yeah, I'd do five, certainly. Fuck Devin? it. I listen five? to women. Yeah. Five. Okay. That gives us a total score of ten, which is into the double digits, but still still pretty good. It's good. T- to actually watch... It's an okay movie. It's there's, yeah. there's not a lot of like meat on it. I long. would say it's like it's a little over long, but it, it's a good movie. I they, like it. They stress the chase scenes a bit too much, and they don't quite the cinematography especially isn't isn't like really able yeah, to carry that weight. It's, like I say, the shakiest of cams. But uh, that is Enemy of the State. How far That's we've right. fallen from a time when you could go in a movie, the government is spying on you, and people would be like, "Holy shit, what?" Um, and... Oh God, that's depressing, hey? <laughs> <laughs> the government's spying on you, I know. Yeah, but these days, uh, it, it might now be... Now of days, it might be a bit less misogynist, because now of days, John Voight's character could be a woman. And that's maybe, right. but... someday, in the distant future, we could get a John Voight, they, them. But in the meantime, <laughs> this has been Kill James Bond, and we'll be returning with... What will we be returning with? The next bonus episode. The next bonus episode is um, is going to be Three Days of the Condor with Nate mm. Bethay. We're going to get our boy on. That's right. Editor of the show, the sometime host of the show, Nate Bethay. It's going to be great. Uh, so subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already. And thank you for listening. We will speak to you then. Thank you for listening to yet another episode of Kill James Bond. We had a little chat after recording, and we've decided it's time to give this show a little bit of structure again. So we're going to be ripping through another film series so you can predict what we'll be watching and follow along at home if you'd like. We will be starting in two weeks' time on the free feed Dipping back into the Jack Ryan movies. We did Hunt for the Red October as a bonus last season. So we're going to be going with Patriot Games starring Harrison Ford next time. But if that is simply too long for you to wait, you can head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash killjamesbond, where we have bonus episodes. The next bonus episode next week will be... Three Days of the Condor with Nate Bethay. Um, speaking, of course, of our beautiful patrons, thank you to our £15 and above patrons, and those are Christine Fox, Forks Winchester, Paint McCalla, Jack Holmes, George Rohack, Thomas Oberhart, Yarrick, Carolyn Tankersley, Benno Rice, Max Kapinski, Morgan Bennett, Kit Devine, Library Hitman, Max Gamenhart, Jonathan Gurley, Hell. Blood Hands, Kentucky Fried Commie, Dread Pirate Robin, Sephira, Luciferax, Fremen Commissar, Jen Jen, Ellie Without the E, Tarp O, Big Titty Goth Girl, Sydney Steckle, Mothman, Trip, Charlie Out of the Closet, Jenna and Poor, Zoe Shepard, Elizabeth Cox, Turfs Eat Shit and Die Alone, Finn Ross, Alfredo, Raised on a Diet, and Make Devon Say This Out Loud, Wolfie, Al Irwing, Ryle Leal, Millie, JM101519, Bon Labon, Josh Simmons, and Lauren Bastin. Thank you for your support. Kill James Bond is Alice, Abigail, and Devon. Our producer is Nate Bethay. Our podcast art is by Matty Lubchansky. And our website is by Tom Allen. See ya.